to try to shift to the thing for this month, which is living in expectancy. Living in expectancy. Uh, 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 the first month we was talking about tithes and offering and it spilled over into February. Last month we was thinking of, uh, of talking about thinking like God. And thinking like God is, 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 is the prerequisite for living in expectancy. It, it, you shouldn't be expecting anything if your thoughts have not become his thoughts and your ways have not become his ways. Because you can live in expectancy, but if you're not prepared, have not positioned yourself to receive from God, then you pr probably won't see what you're looking for. Um, uh, and just because you receive something don't mean it's a blessing from the Lord. Because my Bible said the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. So that's very key. So we have to make sure that we are positioning ourselves. I'm already preaching. I'm already preaching. Yeah, uh, 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 positioning ourselves by making sure our thoughts come into alignment with His Word and His ways, um, uh, and our and our and our and our, our ways coming in alignment with His ways. We can't live like like we want to live and do everything we want to do, and then it's living expectancy and we want God to do this and want God to do that. He's not our go boy. <laughs> he, he 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 don't he don't do what we say. He moves by faith. He moves by our living according to His word. You keep my commandments, then you can ask what you will. If you if you love if you love me, if you love me, then you, you'll keep my commandment. And if you keep my commandment, then you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. So so these are things that have to be in alignment if we're going to see uh uh the, the 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 power of God in our lives. So we, we, we want to look at this month, uh, living in expectancy, uh, living in expectancy. Uh, and that's very key uh, as, 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 as if, the, if the doors, if we believe that the doors are open, if we believe that the doors are open, then we should be living in an expectancy every day, every morning that our eyes come open. We ought to be waking up, expecting God to do whatever he said he was going to do, expecting to see it, expecting it to manifest. And if it don't happen today, we continue to look to tomorrow. If it don't happen tomorrow, we look to Tuesday and Wednesday, however many days um, uh, it shall take. And we're going to see that some, some of this, what I'm saying now in the word today. Because sometimes, and, 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 and y'all know I have notes, but sometimes spirit just takes me a different way and I, I, I forget the notes. <laughs> but sometimes one of our greatest challenges when we are living in expect, expectancy is the, the, the waiting season. The time of waiting and the time of having to uh, believe God when you don't see anything. I ain't getting no amen, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the real challenge. That's the real trying of your faith. That's the real challenge. That's the real deal between the promise and the manifestation. <laughs> yeah, when Jesus said, go to the other side, and you know if you get to the other side, it's going to be all right. But he don't tell you about the storm that's going to happen in the middle of the sea. And, and in the meantime, in the meantime, I feel the Holy Ghost. In the meantime, is it, it, what a real deal is, where the rubber really meets the road, that waiting season. You know God said it. You know he can't lie, but you don't see anything. Nothing has happened yet. Nothing has come to manifestation. And here it is. Other people are testifying, saying, I got mine. <laughs> it happened for me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's happening for me. It's happening for me. I got my baby. I got my promotion. I got my house. I got my husband. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, 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 that's where the real deal come in. Because you know God said it. You know God can do it. But it has not happened as of yet. Can, is, anybody, is anybody here? Anybody on the line? <laughs> yeah, that's the real deal. But 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 we want to talk this morning. Let's try to get to the word because I'm telling you, I could just I could just I could just I could just jump from there and just go on in. <laughs> um, I, 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 our scripture text this morning, we're going to be hanging out in Joshua 14. We're going to be hanging out in Joshua 14. Very familiar uh, passage to Psalm 
uh, 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 and I don't, I don't know if I even take the time to read it um, this morning. You, you can read it uh, at your leisure. Uh, uh, Joshua 14 is where we at. Joshua 14. If you can get your eyes on it, please get your eyes on it. Joshua 14. And, and Joshua 14, we're going to look at verses, um, be hanging out with verses 6 through 14. That's Joshua 14, Joshua 14, and we're going to be hanging out uh, around verses 6 uh, through 14. Oh, uh, yeah. And in this story, in this story, I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to uh, just kind of summarize some of my notes here for, for time sake, so I can have time to really talk to us about what God wants to say. In, in, in these notes, uh, in the background of this text, we see here uh, Caleb. Y'all remember Caleb? Caleb uh, 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 was 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 one of the uh, 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 tribes. Uh, uh, was part of the tribe of Judah, and, 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 and Caleb was uh, one that had uh, spied the land when Moses sent him out. Caleb. And Joshua, remember, came back uh, with a with a good report. And, and, and in this text, let's let, let's 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 look at a couple of verses, uh, just 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 for just for just for a good measure. Uh, 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 let's look. Let's start here. Uh, let's see. Let's look at. Uh, we we'll start at verse eight. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord, my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon, whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord, my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. 40 and five years. So that means he was 40 years old. Oh God. When he got the promise. And this is 45 years later. Somebody said 45. Oh yeah. We don't even want to wait 45 minutes. We don't even want to wait till they cook me some hot fries in the, in, in, in the drive through line at the McDonald's. <laughs> We don't want to win on nothing. Uh, it, it was funny. Elder Johnson and I was in the store the other day, and we was we, we was getting ready to purchase something, and, and, and they would say, "You got to wait to this date." And Elder Johnson said, "No, I, uh, 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 I want it now." <laughs> and so like, later on, uh, while we was making the purchase, she changed her mind. She said, "She said we got, we, I got to act like that. I can wait till to that time." But what, what, she, what she went on to say, we're so programmed. We're so, I, that she called it. Amazonitis or something, <laughs> but we want it now. We want same day shipping. We want our food now. We want everything now. We're in a, 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 a instant, a instant a, 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 a generation. We want it now. We got time for the food to warm up in the oven. We want it hot now. We want it cold now. We want everything now. We want the husband now. We want the breakthrough now. We want the promise now. And, and, and so, but 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 uh, uh, Caleb. Uh, is saying uh, it's 45 years since the Lord spake the word to me. Do y'all see that in the text? It's been 40 and five years since God said it. And so he go on to say that uh, at, at, at this day, four, four, I'm, I'm four scores at five years old. But watch this. As yet, I am strong this day as I was in that day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Here's verse 12, and this, this is where our subject coming from. He said, now therefore, I'm about to get happy. He said, now therefore, give me this mountain, where are the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the uh, Anakin's um, uh, were there, and that the city was great and fast. If so be the Lord would be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. Uh, 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 Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb. I'm trying to say, uh, our subject today is give me this mountain. 
That means I don't care how long it has to take. I will not move from what God has promised me. What God has said is mine. I don't care how long it takes the natural to catch up with the supernatural. Y'all ain't talking to me. I don't care how long it take the natural to catch up with the supernatural. I will not let go of my confession or profession, as the Bible says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will not let go of what God promised me. My subject this morning is give me this mountain. Somebody decree, give me this mountain. What are you saying, Bishop? Give me whatever God said I could have. I got a bulldog tenacity. I got hold on the bone and I will not let go until you bless me. If I got to wrestle with the angel, I wrestle with the angel, but I won't let go until you bless me because I'm living in expectancy. I'm expecting some. A pregnant mother is living in expectancy. Sometimes she go ahead and pack her little grip and pack her little suitcase because she know at any time I might have to get up out of here and get to the hospital because what God has pr promised shall manifest. Uh, 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 Mary began to ponder these things in the heart, in her heart. And the Bible says, she said, that that shall be an expectancy. <laughs> That shall be a performance from the Lord. How many can say that shall be a performance? That shall be a, a, a breakthrough. That shall be a, a, a manifestation of what God said. So give me this mountain. Uh, Caleb said, give it to me. I'm 85 years old, and he told me this some, some 40 years ago, but it don't matter to me because to me it's just like he said it yesterday because if he said it, shall he not do it? And if he spoke it, he got to make it good because the word of the Lord shall not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish Oh, I'm getting too happy now. Uh, what he sent it out to do. And if you got a preceding word from God, you got to hold on to it. And your tenacity and your sentiment and your confession and your testimony should be, give me this mouth. <laughs> Give it to me. It's mine. I ain't taking no for an answer. I ain't, I'm not coming back off what God said. I'm not taking, I'm not drawing back. I'm not giving up. If God said it, it's word. If God said it, it's law. If God said it, it is so. Somebody said it is so. <laughs> oh, I feel Jesus. Let me try to let me try to calm down just a little bit. I'm trying to come down just a little bit, just a little bit. Give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. Give me this business. Give me this promotion. Give me, oh God, give me this degree. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Give me this home. Give me this peace. Give me this joy. Give me this breakthrough. Give me this increase. Give me this favor. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Woo. So that's that that's that's what we want to talk about a little bit this morning. So let, let me try to calm down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in, as I was saying, in the background of this text, uh, 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 the land the, of Canaan, which had been promised to uh, 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 the 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 uh, children of Israel, had been divided. And I, and, and I found out something that I didn't know. Maybe y'all knew it, and, and y'all pray for me that I can learn more. <laughs> I found out in the background of studying for this message uh, uh, that we always have said that it was 12 tribes of Israel. But I found out that it's 13 tribes uh, that was, um, uh, uh, actually it was 13 tribes because um, uh, one, uh, one of the tribes, which was... Um, uh, 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 Joseph uh, tribe, um, the, the, uh, one of his, uh, uh, one of the tribes um, uh, was divided into two tribes, uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. They was divided into two tribes, so that made it be thirteen to the twelve. But 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 Joshua and um, Eleazar, who was the priest, and one leader from each tribe was a a, a summons together. They came together. And they cast lot to see who would get what land because God had promised them to them. And so they, the, the land had to be divided out. It had to be divided out. Some got big pieces, some got small pieces, but God had promised them the land. Uh huh. And, and, and Caleb was in that 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 lineage and in that line and in the tribe of Judah. And he was promised 
some land. He was promised an inheritance. Are y'all all right? Sound like some of us. We, we have an inheritance. We have been promised some things. God has made us some precious promises. Uh, Peter talks about it. We have the precious promises. We have these precious promises. Are y'all hear me? And my Bible said that the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. He's not slack. So so, 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 so the, the land had been divided. 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 And we begin to see in verse number six that uh, 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 of, of, of Joshua 14, we see here that they came to uh to 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 to, to uh the, the children of Judah, the children of Judah came to Joshua, the children of Judah, the who, who, whom uh, Caleb was a part of this tribe, and they came to Joshua, and Caleb came with them, and Caleb began to uh, to state his claim. He began to state his claim. He began to remind them. He said, thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's why it's so important. And y'all may not agree with this, and that's okay. But it's important to have a prophet of God. It's important to have a prophet of God in your life that can speak to you concerning what God is saying. The Bible said, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you uh, be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. I know people don't believe prophets. Prophets still exist today. But let me tell you something. You need a man of God. You need a prophet that can see what God is saying and decree and declare in your life and it manifests. He said, he said, remember what the man of God said concerning me. Somebody said, remember what, 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 what was said concerning me. Somebody decree, I remember what was said concerning me. He said, he said, I, I was 45 years, I mean, 40 years old when he said it. And I still remember. Somebody said, I still remember. Somebody decree, I still remember what God said. See, 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 that, that brings me down to point number one. Um, I'm jumping I'm all over my notes. Y'all pray for me. I'm all over my notes. Uh, my, my, my point number one uh, I, I want to mention to you today uh, is, uh, uh, have you stopped speaking about the promise you received from the Lord? Point number one is in a question. Have you stopped speaking concerning the word you receive from God. See, I promise, I'm sometimes guilty. If I don't see it uh, in a certain amount of time, I stop talking about it because I said maybe I miss God. I bind that spirit up in me and in you uh -huh, that tell us we miss God. My, my Bible declares real clearly, my sheep know my voice. Y'all won't talk to me now. And you know you heard God. And by now you should know the difference between the voice of the Lord and the voice of the enemy. The devil never promised you nothing good. The devil is never trying to promise you increase. The devil never speaks about inheritance. The devil never speaks about abundance. The devil never Never speaks about prosperity. Are y'all all right? My Bible says he come to steal, kill, and destroy. So why is he gonna tell you about something good when he trying to kill you? Y'all ain't saying that. Though. He told he told Adam and Eve, you won't surely die. <laughs> You gonna die, but you won't surely die. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always a setup when the enemy is talking to you. The Bible says we should not be ignorant concerning Satan's devices. I wish I had Bible readers on the line today. We should not be ignorant concerning Satan's devices, and we should know the difference between the voice of God and the voice of the enemy. And so, 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 so Caleb here uh, began to talk about and begin to reminisce and begin to remind them about what God said to them. The Bible says sometimes we need to recall. Uh -huh. This I will recall. That's Lamentation 3. I, it ain't never knows what it's in, in my spirit. Lamentation 3, I will recall. Sometimes you need to recall what God said. Not only what he's already done, but re re recall what he said to you. Recall what he promised to you two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, when you was a child when you first got saved, recall it, bring it back up in your spirit. Keep talking about it. Keep talking about it. I said, keep talking about it. Remind other people, tell other people, I'm waiting on God because God promised this to me and he cannot lie. Y'all all right? 
Somebody said, I still remember. <laughs> I still remember. I still remember. So, 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 so Caleb here began to reminisce. Caleb here began to talk about, he said, you know, y'all know what God said concerning me. Don't, don't get it twisted. Don't act like y'all don't forget. You, you were there when, when, when God spoke it. You were there when I received that prophecy. You were there when God manifested that, when I said that thing through the man of God. He said, you know what God said concerning me. Uh-huh. Somebody said, I still remember. I, I, I keep hearing that real good. Uh, 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 your speaking is connected to your faith. God told me that. I put it in my notes. Your speaking is connected to your faith. If you have stopped speaking of your promise, could it be that you have stopped believing to see manifestation? Y'all ain't saying that. I forgot to put my notes up so y'all can see it on the screen if you wanted to. Let me take out, grab these notes right quick and put them on the screen in case you want to see it. In case you want to see it. <laughs> y'all forgive me. I, I, I just get excited about the word. Uh, and put up this screen. Here it is. Uh, but 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 could it be? Could it be? Could it be that if you have stopped speaking concerning your promise, could it be you have stopped believing to see it manifest? Remember this: you can have what you say, but if you're not saying anything, there's not anything for you to have. <laughs> I wrote it down just like God said it to me. Y'all ain't saying that to y'all man. <laughs> Mark 11, 23 is clear. Uh, you can have whatsoever you say, but could it be that you ain't saying nothing so you ain't got nothing to have? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Could it be that we have stopped talking? We have stopped speaking. We have stopped decreeing because we have stopped seeing. <laughs> we ain't saw nothing. We Nothing has manifested yet. So the enemy... I'm not talking about the devil, I'm talking about you, I'm talking about me, I'm talking the enemy, I-N-N-E-R, the enemy, <laughs> that's, that's where that right, I-N-E-R, <laughs> the enemy has stopped, uh, 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 have, 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 have tricked us to believe you need to stop saying that because ain't nothing happened yet. Don't you remember the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5? If you look at verse Mark chapter 5, verse 28 in the Amplified, it said she kept on saying. Y'all ain't saying that. I can't get no help. She kept on saying, if I can touch, I know I can be healed. Healing belongs to the children. Healing is the children's bread. I, I know if I could just get there. She kept saying it. She said it on Monday. She said it on Tuesday. She said it on Wednesday. She said it again Thursday. Weekend came. She said it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Y'all ain't saying nothing. She kept on saying it. Somebody said, I got to keep on saying it. The enemy, the enemy, the enemy want me to be quiet. Don't want me to say it. Cause it tells you you're gonna look crazy. You're gonna look foolish. Well, I'm a fool for Christ. I don't mind looking crazy because it ain't what my word is that gotta manifest. It's God's word. God's word is on the line. And so I don't have a problem keep saying that because he got to honor what he said. Are y'all all right? So the Bible said the woman with the issue of blood, she kept on saying. She kept on saying. <laughs> Somebody said, keep on saying. Put that in the chat. You got to keep on saying. You got to keep on saying. You got to keep on saying. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. How long did I say it? Say it till you see it. Say it till you see it. Say it till you see it. Are y'all getting this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, God gave me this when I was studying. Matthew 7 and 7. We know what it's saying. Most of you might, might know it by heart. Might not know the scripture reference, but when I say it, you're going to know it. It says this. It says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Then it says, knock and the door shall be open. I'm going to read that again. It says, ask and you shall receive. Uh -huh. It says, seek and you shall find. And then it says, knock and the door shall be open. Let me tell you this. Just because a door is closed doesn't mean it's locked. <laughs> when God told me that, I really got happy. I know we're talking about open door, but sometimes we get to a door and the door is closed and we think that that means it ain't going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be, that could be, I, I wrote in my notes, in some cases, the closed door is a trying of your faith to see if you bold enough to knock, knowing that the thing behind the door is already yours. Y'all ain't getting it. 
got to get this. I don't care if I went to the bank and the doors were locked. If I knew somebody had told me I got a million dollars in that bank, I'm going to knock on that door to somebody come open it. I'll be knocking them when they get there. Because why? I know that you got something that belongs to me. I'm willing to stand here and knock and keep on knocking. So, so, so God began to talk to me about these three things, ask, seek, and knock. He began to give me some revelation. And I hope you'll uh, 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 stay with me to get what God is saying. When you have something that you're going after, your pursuit, he said this to me, should gravitate through these three areas as it relates to your faith. I said, what are you saying, God? He said, look, he said, the first thing you see is ask. I said, what are you saying? He said, yes, ask. Ask is prayer that makes your request known to God. Philippians 4 and 6 says, uh, be anxious for nothing. You know what it says. Uh, but, but by everything, by prayer and supplication, making your request known to God. You first got to ask. You first got to open up your little pretty mouth and ask. Uh -huh. uh, when I was growing up, my mama said, you can have the, you can have some cookies. You can have the, the brownie on the table. You can have some Kool-Aid, but you got to ask. If you don't ask, you don't receive. You don't get nothing. So you first got to ask. You first got to make your request known. You can't be anxious, but you got to ask. You got to ask and say, God, I'm waiting on you, your time, whatever you say, uh, but but th this is my request. That's the first That's the first part. That's the first part of releasing your faith, to ask in, in, in faith. Ask in faith. Uh, uh, James says, let, let us ask in faith, not, not, not wavering. Because any man that don't ask in faith, he's double-minded and he's unstable in all his ways. So asking is key, but asking in faith. Asking in faith. Asking in faith. Y'all get this? Ask, ask, make your request known, but ask in faith. The next thing God said to me was, he said the next one is seek. I said, what are you saying, God? He says seeking is where you add works to your faith. James 2 and 20, I think uh, Elder Carter talked, mentioned that in, in her message last week. Uh, uh, faith without works is dead. So if I'm going to seek, I got to add some works to my faith. I begin to seek out, hear, hear me, what, 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 what I need to do to participate with God. Anytime God did something for anybody, he usually gave them something to do. You need some scripture, take up your bed and walk. Go show yourself to the priest. Go dip in the pool seven times. Uh -huh. God always gives you something to do to participate in what he's going to do. So that's your secret. That's adding some works to your faith. Works are corresponding actions based on what you believe. Write that definition down. I said works are corresponding actions based on what you believe. Now, if you ain't believing nothing, you don't need no word. But if you're believing God for something, add to your faith. The Bible said that. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. So you add the words. You add the corresponding actions. If I believe God, I fill out the application. I go to school. I prepare myself because I'm believing God for something. So I begin to seek by adding to my faith. Y'all all right? Okay. But then the last one he said was not. Nah. I said, God, what are you saying about knock? He said, knock is where you continually speak of what you're expecting to happen in your life. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting so happy right now. Uh, so, so I got to ask, I got to seek, and I got to knock. <laughs> uh, Hebrews, look real quick at Hebrews chapter 4 and look at verse number 14. Hebrews 4. And 14 says this, it says, seeing that we have a great priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. But when you study it out, that word profession means confession. So your confession should be continually hold fast to your 
speaking, to your decreeing, to your declaring. So, so, so knocking is meaning I continually speak of what is I'm expecting God to do. Uh huh. Job 22 and 28 said, Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Could it be that things have not been established in your faith because you stopped speaking and decreeing? Are y'all all right? Y'all remember the woman with the unjust judge over there in Luke 18? That was something that she felt was due her. Somebody say, It's due me. <laughs> I'm an heir of God and I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ and I got some things that's due me. So I say it's due me. And the Bible said she continued to talk about it until it manifests. She continued to go to the unjust judge and say, avenge me of my adversary. It's due me. I'm a, I, I'm entitled to this. I'm an heir of this. I, I should, this, this is mine. God said I can have it. And so she kept on worrying. She kept on speaking. She kept on requesting. She kept on petitioning. Are y'all all right? She kept on so much so that even the unjust judge who didn't fear God, y'all didn't say that, and then regard man said, just because this woman keep on worrying me, she keep on talking about it, she won't let it go, she won't let it rest. He said, I'm gonna avenge her. <laughs> and then God said, Don't you hear what the just judge said? <laughs> he said, and won't your God do the same thing when his children cry day and night, when they decree day and night, when they keep on saying that, and they keep on saying that, and they keep on saying that. He said, I advise them speedily. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I speed it up. I hasten my word. Man, I feel God up in here. I hasten my word to perform it when I can get somebody that has a bulldog tenacity and won't let go, won't stop saying it, won't stop decreeing it, won't stop confessing it. Y'all ain't saying that. And if you keep on saying that, something got to manifest because you can have what you say. Woo, I'm just excited about the word. Y'all overlook me. Get that the way I do it. <laughs> Pray for me. But look at something. Look, look, look at Matthew 7, 7 in the Amplified. Look at Matthew 7. I, I, I just read it in the, in, in the King James, asking you shall receive, uh, seeking you shall find, not going to, you shall be open. But then God said, God said, tell them about the Amplified. The Amplified says, keep on asking and it will be given. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking reverently and the door will be open to you. <laughs> so keep on asking. Keep on, keep on making your request known. Keep on seeking. Keep on adding works to your faith. And, and the last thing, keep on knocking. Keep on speaking what you believe God to do. Are y'all all right? Somebody said keep on. Our old people say keep on keeping on. <laughs> Oh, I get so happy about the word. So, so I'm trying to tell us, we have a job to do. Paul called it fighting the good fight of faith. We know we win. We already conquer us, but you got to fight the fight of faith. You got to fight past uh, what you don't see. We got to fight past what you do see. Because what you see is temporal, but what you don't see is eternal. Are y'all all right? You got to fight the good fight of faith when you don't see nothing. When you don't see nothing, go again. Go. He, the, uh, Elijah told the servant, he said, go look again. He said, I don't see nothing. He said, go again. He said, I don't see that. He said, go again. Y'all ain't saying, somebody said, go again. <laughs> Do it again. Try it again. Fill the application out again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Try to go get back in school again. <laughs> try it this time and see what happens. Y'all, try to apply for a house. Try to get your credit straight. Y'all ain't saying that. And watch God manifest because you're not willing to let go. Woo! Have you stopped speaking about the promise you received from the Lord? Cater said, look, I'm still talking about this. It's 45 years later, and I'm still saying, Moses said, by, by, by the unction of the Holy Ghost and by the Spirit of God, that this mountain belonged to me. This is my land. <laughs> this land is your land, and this land is my land. <laughs> oh, 
I just get so happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have that kind of uh, attitude, that kind of, uh, that that kind of, that kind of position. Uh, this, this was on to me. I ain't being cocky. I ain't being arrogant. But I know what God said, and I will not let go because I know He said it, and I'm gonna hold on to it until I got the promise in my hand. Are y'all all right? Please say you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Please say y'all right. Uh, 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 thought number two. Let's go back to uh, our text in, in, in Joshua 14. And let's look at verse 10. I, I was just saying this a few minutes ago. Joshua said in verse 10, uh, Joshua 14 and 10. Are you there? It says, it says, and now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Look at somebody said, he kept me alive. Put that in the chat, please. He kept me alive. The, the, God ain't gonna let you die until what he said come to pass. And so what scripture over there in Genesis, I think it's Genesis 26 or Genesis 28. I got it somewhere in my notes. But it says, I will not leave thee until I have performed everything I, I, I said. God is not going to let the devil take you out because you got a word in you that has to manifest and you can't go to the ground with that word because that means God's word would have failed. <laughs> so, somebody, so, so, so Caleb, Caleb began to testify for a minute. He said, God kept me alive these 40 and five, uh, 45 years since the Lord spoke the word uh, to, 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 to Moses. He said, he kept me alive. He kept me. The enemy tried several times to take me out. Oh, most of y'all got them kind of testimonies. It, there's been time the enemy tried to take you out. He tried to snatch you away. But but the Bible said that the Lord stood with me. <laughs> the Lord strengthened me and the Lord stood with me. Somebody said the Lord stood with me. I, I dare you to say the Lord stood with me. That's my testimony. The Lord stood with me. He strengthened me. When the enemy came in like a flood, he shot out my side. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the, the Spirit of God raised up a standard and told the enemy, you got to step back. Give me 50 feet because he belonged to me. And he got a word in here that has not manifested. I couldn't die on the breathing machine. I couldn't die, glory to God, on, on dialysis. I couldn't go down, my God, with sepsis. Y'all listen. Why? Because I had a word in me that had manifested yet. So God said, I got to get him up because that word is running around in him. That's why Jesus got up by the grave. Y'all ain't saying nothing because he had word in him <laughs> that had manifested yet. He had to send it back to the Father. He had took the he he had uh, uh, got all power in his hand yet he he, he hadn't got the victory over the grave yet yes, yes. so he everything had been finished yet so 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 he had to rise up and get back in place at the right hand of the father that was the, that, that was the, uh, the, the the completion uh, uh, of the deal for him to come back to his original place. My God, he was just on loan for a minute. Uh, <laughs> he just went uh, through a season, but he had to come back to his rightful place. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So he had a word in him that couldn't kill him. My God, the word he couldn't die with that word in him. He had word in him. That's why when he met the enemy in the wilderness, he began to speak what was in him. My question to you, what is in you? Speak what God said. Decree what God said. Decree the word. Not man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by the word. You got to live by what's in you. You got to decree what's in you. And that's what you'll see manifest. Woo. We try to calm down. <laughs> Thought number two. Thought number two. It's perfectly okay to boast in the Lord. This speaks of your confidence in him. I said again, it is perfectly okay to boast in the Lord, not, not yourself. This speaks of your confidence in him. Look at verse 10 again. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 40 and 5 years since the Lord spoke the word to Moses, while the Israelites wandered in the winters, watch this, and now, behold, I am this day 85 years old. Verse 11, look at this. Yet, 
I am as strong today as I was the day Moses sent me. <laughs> Listen at that confidence in the Lord. Now, he, he, didn't, he didn't even have to say uh, nothing about God, but because he had been walking with God, because he had been uh, communing with God, because he had been holding on to his faith, because he had relentless faith. I heard you holding on. He had relentless faith, and he refused to let go of what God said. He didn't even have to mention God's name. Sometimes when you're talking and you don't mention God's name, people think you, you, you're saying that about yourself uh, 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 as a result of yourself. I may not say uh, 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 I'm strong because God stood with me, but I'm saying I'm strong. I know He stood with me. <laughs> so, 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 so He said, "Yeah, I am as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so is my strength now for war to go in and to come out, to, to, to go in and, and uh, to go out and come in." That we said, He said, He's he, He's boasting. He's speaking of his confidence. I'm just as strong. Don't let the age fool you. <laughs> it's some people that may be old, old, older or elderly, but honey, they got strength. They, they've been walking with God. They've seen God do it. Their faith has been increased. Their faith has grown. And you cannot outrun them in their faith. You cannot outrun them in their confidence. Oh, I heard your Holy Ghost. He said, I call the old because they know the way. And I call the young because they're strong. <laughs> Woo! But don't let, don't, don't let the age fool you. They know the way, but some of them are still strong in the Lord and the power of his might. They're strong. Caleb drew on a strength that was ir irresistible because he's had a faith that never wavered. Write that down. Caleb drew on a strength that was irresistible because he had a faith that never wavered. I said one more time. Caleb drew on a strength that was irresistible because he had a faith that never wavered. Uh, you remember over there in Romans 4, the Bible said, uh, over there, uh, Romans 4, I think it's verse 18, 19, somewhere in there, it says, Abraham <laughs> staggered not at the promise. He staggered not at the promise, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God because he believed that he was faithful that promise. Y'all ain't saying that to me. He didn't stagger at the faith. It didn't matter that it took Abraham 25 years to get Isaac. He didn't stagger at the promise. Are y'all all right? He didn't waver in his faith. And tell somebody, I can't waver in this season. I got to stop wavering. I got to believe God once and for all and hold on until they bless me. Are y'all all right? So, so it's perfectly okay to say, I'm strong in the Lord. I, I'm, I got confidence. I know God's going to do it. See, sometimes some, some, you, you're being arrogant. You're being cocky. No, no, no. I'm being confident. Cast not away your confidence that has great recompense or reward. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you shall receive the promise. I'm in the word, Hebrews 10, 35. They didn't even know, but, but that, that, that's for free. Cast not away your confidence that has great recompense or reward. If you can just continue to hold fast to your confidence, you shall see the goodness of the Lord. Are y'all all right? Psalm 34 and 2. We love the quote Psalm 34 and 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Got it. But verse 2 said, my soul. <laughs> shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Are y'all all right? Tell somebody, it's time for you to start boasting in the Lord. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, David started boasting in the Lord. David said, I killed the lion, and I killed the bear. <laughs> he told the giant, he said, look, and he, he, he didn't mention God. He didn't mention God's name. He was speaking from his, he was boasting in the Lord. He was speaking of his confidence. I've killed the lion and I've killed the bear. And, 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 and uncircumcised for the time, I'm going to kill you too. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> and, and don't let don't let the size fool you. Don't let the enemy uh, uh, make things look bigger than what it is. Uh -huh. If God gave you a promise, you can run over a wall. You can run through a troop. You can leap over the wall. You can get past it. You can get around it. You can knock it out. You can conquer it because God said so. Somebody say, because God said so. <laughs> so my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Are y'all all right? My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Caleb said, I'm just as strong today as I was the day Moses said it. <laughs> I'm just as confident today as I was the day Moses said it. I'm, I'm, I believe God just as much the day he said it as I still believe him today. The, the, the years going by has not changed my confession. The time going by has not changed my faith. Are y'all all right? The time that has elapsed has not changed my confidence in God. I believe the word of God because his words cannot return more. Do I have any help up here today? So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Might be all we can take <laughs> for today. So, so, so quick recap. You got to continue to speak concerning what God said. The woman with the issue of blood, she kept on saying. She kept on saying. <laughs> she kept on saying. Bleeding and all. She kept on saying. Hurting and all. I don't see nothing. Like I'm getting worse. I ain't feeling no better. My strength is leaving me as I speak. But she kept on saying, if I can just touch him, if I can just get there, I will receive what he got for me. Healing belongs to me. Joy belongs to you. Promotion belongs to you. Increase. Are y'all hearing me? You got to know what's yours and you got to say, it. I'm not going to stop talking about it because God said it's mine. I'm willing to ask. I'm willing to seek and I'm willing to keep on knocking. I'm willing to keep on knocking. Tell somebody your words is your knock. <laughs> Your words is your knock. Why you say that? Because the way we get anything from God is by faith. And your speaking is connected to your faith. So if I got to keep on speaking it, and that's my faith, I'm going to keep on knocking with my faith. <laughs> I'm going to keep on knocking. I'm going to keep on knocking. I'm going to keep on knocking. <laughs> I said I'm going to keep on knocking. Even when it look like ain't nobody coming to the door, I'm going to keep on knocking. When it look like the door is not opening, I'm going to keep on knocking. When it look like everybody getting nails before me, I'm going to keep on knocking. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to keep on keeping on. You got to keep on keeping on. You got to keep on saying it. You got to keep on. Like the woman with the unjust judge, you got to keep on worrying with God until it manifests. Y'all all right? You ain't bothering God. You ain't getting on his nerves. Sometimes parents say, God don't leave me alone, get on my nerve. You don't get on God's nerve. <laughs> he said, remind me of my word. <laughs> it don't bother me for you to keep on saying, I'm a child of God. I'm an heir and a joint heir. I'm the head, not, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. I'm the lender, not the barrier. That don't bother God for you to keep on saying what he said concerning you. What he said concerning you. Are y'all all right? <laughs> yeah, so keep on saying it. Keep on saying it. Keep on knocking. Keep on asking and keep on seeking. Keep on making your request known. Keep on and uh, works to your faith and keep on knocking on the door until you get an answer. Uh huh. Uh huh. The people was in there praying. Uh, 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 the church was praying for Peter and Peter was at the door knocking. <laughs> and after a while, the 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 the, 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 uh, the dancer went to the door and said, "He's Peter." They said, "Ain't nothing, Peter." <laughs> uh, God, uh, God, uh, answer why you're knocking. <laughs> God, uh, come while you're calling. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I'm telling you, if you keep on knocking, God will answer. If you keep on knocking, something will break. Something gotta break. Something gotta break. Elder Johnson preached that sermon one day. Something gotta break. Keep on knocking, even if rain or water. Keep dropping on a rock. Eventually, it'll split it. Go, go research it. If, if 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 a drop of water keep dropping on concrete, 
it will eventually split it. Why? Because it's continual. Y'all ain't seen that thing. And the water is the word. <laughs> so keep on knocking with the word. Keep on knocking with the word. Keep on knocking with the word. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Keep on knocking with the word. Keep, not what you think, not how you feel. Keep on knocking with the word. The word is a hammer. Keep on knocking with the word. And after a while, you'll see breakthrough. <laughs> oh, I'm too happy. Uh, 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 the last thing we talked about in the closing, it is perfectly okay to boast in the Lord. Not in what you have achieved. Paul said, I count everything done, done as done. Paul was smart. Paul sat at the feet of Gamaliel. Pa Paul, was, Paul was a Hebrew of Hebrew. Paul was smart. Paul was educated. But Paul said, I count it all as dog. Why? Because my boast has to be in the Lord. Make no provision for the flesh and put no confidence in the flesh. You can't do it within yourself. Without me, you can't do nothing, says God. <laughs> but with me, you can do all things. So the Bible says that we have to put our boast in the Lord. Speak about God. Tell your mountain, you got to you, you gotta come, you got to move, you got to do something. Cause why? I boast in the Lord and I speak my faith concerning this mountain. So, so, so can say, give me the mountain. Give it to me. <laughs> I've been believing God. <laughs> I've been speaking about it. I've been boasting in the Lord. And now I'm to the place where I said, give it to me. I ain't waiting not one more minute. Today is my day. Today is my season. This is my time. This is my opportunity. Give me this mountain. <laughs> Somebody say, give me this mountain. <laughs> I've waited. I dance with you. I, I, I celebrate God with your testimony. <laughs> I rejoice when you rejoice. Glory to God. I, 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 I was happy for you. When you had your baby, I was happy for you when you got married. <laughs> I was happy when you got your breakthrough. So now I'm saying, give me this. Woo! That's my attitude. That's my confession. That's my declaration today. Give me this mouth. I boast in the Lord. I have confidence in him. I waited patient on the Lord. And he inclined unto me. Glory to God. He brought me up out of a harbor pit. He established my going and put a new song in my mouth. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Woo! So give me this mountain. Somebody say, give me this mountain. Come on, open your mouth wherever you at. Open your mouth and say, give me this mountain. Say, I, I, it's mine. I'm not taking it back. I refuse to take it back. I refuse to take it back. I refuse to take it back. Give me this mount. God bless you today. God bless you. God keep you as my prayer. I close here. We'll try to see what else God is saying on Tuesday night. The Lord said the same. But be encouraged because God have given you precious promises. He's given you precious promises. They belong to you. You got to go and possess it. He always told them, the land is yours, but you got to go and possess it. God ain't bringing nothing to you. You got to get up and go get it. <laughs> he's already made it possible, and he's already prepared the way. Your faith got to get you up, and you got to go and take what's rightfully yours. The kingdom suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Are y'all okay? Father, thank you for your word. I gave the people exactly what you gave me. I thank you for giving me the word. And God help us to take on this attitude, this confession. Give me this mount. Give it to me. It's mine. It belongs to me. Help us to ask and keep on asking. Help us to seek and keep on seeking. Help us to knock and keep on knocking until manifestation is evident. God, we thank you for it now. We thank you that this word shall have fruit, Psalm 30, 60, even 100 fold. We give you praise for it now. We thank you for the word. The enemy will not steal this word. 
the enemy will not steal this word, but this word shall take root. This word shall take root. And we thank you for it. We give you praise now. In Jesus' name, we do pray. God's people declare, amen.